And now, Daljit Dhaliwal. One of President Obama's first acts was to let federal agencies know that a new era of open government had begun. Perhaps the president had seen the recently published Open Budget Index. While the United States ranks higher than most on the index, an astonishing 95% of the world's governments fail to provide their citizens with adequate accounting of how their money is spent. To talk about why budget transparency is so critical to good government, both here and around the world, we're joined by Warren Krafchick of the International Budget Partnership. Warren, welcome to the program. Thank you. What exactly is open budgeting and why is it so important? Open budgeting we refer to as a process whereby the government involves citizens in every stage of the budget process. To do this, this means that they need to provide comprehensive and timely information to the public to enable them to participate, as well as to provide opportunities for their formal participation in the process. The reason why this is so important is that budget transparency is a fundamental cornerstone of, of accountability and transparency and accountability are fundamental to providing efficient and effective government services. So share some examples where there's both positive and negative of how the way a country budgets affects the quality of the lives of uh, its citizens. Well, let's start on the positive side. So in the case of Mexico, for example, increasing public provision, in, in, increasing provision of information to the public has allowed civil society organizations to take up the case of women who die during childbirth. Mexico has one of the highest rates of maternal mortality in the world. When civil society organizations started becoming interested in this in 2003, the government did not provide sufficient funding to meet its commitment to eliminate rural maternal mortality. By having the information available, civil society could talk to the press, could talk to parliament, and could eventually talk to the executive. And this led to a 900% increase in the amount of money that the government spends on maternal mortality. To see the opposite case, one only has to look at Nigeria, one looks at Equatorial Guinea, for example, to look, for example, how lack of transparency provides enormous opportunities for governments to hide unpopular spending and for waste and corruption to occur. Waste and corruption mean fewer resources are available for poverty expenditures. So what kind of examples did you find in Equatorial Guinea, for instance? Well, the Equatorial Guinea government, in particular the president and his family, seem to have a penchant for houses overseas. Malibu and many other countries, Clifton Beach in South Africa is a second one. So somehow they seem to be providing sufficient resources to do that. In um, Nicaragua, for example, the failure of the Nicaraguan government to account for the aid funds that it, that it receives from Venezuela has enabled the Nicaraguan government to increase its military expenditures in a way that's totally unaccounted to in its public. What kind of trends are you seeing that explain uh, overall the lack of government transparency? Well, the, the overall finding is that the lack of government transparency around the world, as you indicated, is deplorable. In 80 of the 85 countries that we've looked at, government does not provide sufficient information for the citizens or the public more broadly to be able to hold the government accountable for how they use the public's funds. That's the bad news. The, the good news is that over the last two years, we found examples of at least eight countries that have significantly improved their budget transparency performance and a number of other countries, 10 in all, that have provided more minor but important improvements in budget transparency. Well, President Obama has, uh, of course, made um, right. openness in government a priority of his administration. We rank fifth um, on your index. No. Um, what can we learn from the British, the French, from South Africa and from New Zealand that we you know, that could get, get us higher up the list, so to speak. Well, the top five, there's very little separating the top five performers. Um, in the U.S., probably further opportunities for much broader citizen engagement in the budget process is important. And perhaps one could look to France, one could look to South Africa for opportunities for examples of how this might be done. But the U.S. Is, scores pretty high as far as central government budget expenditure is concerned. And let's talk a little bit about how the current emphasis by donors who want greater transparency yeah. is having um, a net impact in the nations that are currently getting development aid. Mm. Well, one of the unfortunate findings of the index is that country, many of the lowest performing countries are actually countries that receive significant recipients of aid, 
of international aid. Now, this is an unfortunate find, finding because one would have hoped that significant infusions of aid over the last 10 or so years would have helped to improve public finance systems and access to information. This is not the case. But on the other hand, what one finds is that the vast majority of governments in the, covered in the survey produce far more information, often for donors or for internal purposes, than they make available to their publics. So if international donors, whether it be the US or the UK or France or any uh, uh, of the developed countries, wish to really help budget transparency around the world, all they have to do is encourage recipient governments to publish the information that they're already producing for donors. Mm. And how does open budgeting, do you think, factor into considerations of the economic crisis? Hmm. I think the questions of open budgeting are going to become even more important because of the economic crisis. The economic crisis, as it hits developing countries, is going to imply far less revenue for those countries, whether that's because of less domestic taxation or whether it's because of decreased international aid. That means that constraints, that choices in these countries are going to be more constrained and the necessity to keep the public involved within the, those decisions is going to be even more important for the legitimacy of those decisions as well as for how well that money translates into effective services. Okay, Warren Kraftchik, thank you very much for coming on Foreign Exchange. Thanks.